Good evening, sir. Is this way? Come on. I understand uh, you wanted to talk to me about Professor Rusk. Well, actually, it was your son that suggested it. Sir. Yes. More specifically, about his books. Uh, that could have been what your son had in mind, sir. You're not sure? About what your son had in mind? No, sir, I'm not. Have you read his books? I didn't know he wrote books, sir. You're investigating the murder of Professor Rusk, and you're unaware that the man wrote a series of highly incendiary profiles exposing major crime figures in the United States? Well, let me tell you what happened, sir. I was going out to lunch, and a captain come up, uh, and he asked me, do I want to go speak to these college students? I said, yeah, sure. He handed me a piece of paper, called Professor Rusk. That's the first time I ever heard his name. But that was before he was murdered. Yes, sir. After he was murdered and you were trying to find out who did it, did you have any uh, curiosity about the man's life? You mean like going out and reading his books, sir? I mean like finding out that there were a whole lot of people out there who wanted to see him dead. Well, he was having an affair. I don't know if you know this, sir. With the coach's wife. Uh, she's a married woman. It's a very emotional... And woman. this is how you've been spending your time? Yes, sir. And talking with the kids. And talking to the kids. It's perfectly clear that you haven't the faintest idea of which end is up here. That's not an insult, it's a statement of fact. I can't do your homework for you, but I can point you in the right direction. This is Rusk's first book on organized crime in New Orleans. Read it. And this one is a galley of his second book on white collar crime in Southern California. He ties it to the mob and to the laundering of drug money, and it names names. Read it. The bottom line here is that some very dangerous men made actual threats on the professor's life. What you need to do is stop worrying so much about whose wife is screwing home and get to the heart of the matter. This man was shot because he had a big mouth. Well, I certainly appreciate you telling me this, sir. It's gonna make my life a lot easier, because now I'm pointed in the right direction. I can't believe how perfect this is. Coop, I got a question for you. Yeah. Do you think Columbo's parents were related? I found out <laughs> one thing for sure tonight. I know where your son gets his brains. This is better than sex. <laughs> My son has the best mind of anybody I have ever met. But he still couldn't get into Harvard Law School without my help. His ability, they should have sent a limousine for him. But it didn't work that way. I had to push a lot of buttons. I don't know what was wrong. His mind someplace else. I wish I knew where. In any case, he's going to wind up the best criminal attorney in this country, or I'm going to break every bone in his body. Oh, I wouldn't worry, sir. He'll go far. He better. Oh, he's pretty wacky. Yeah, he's a sick man. I hate him. His friend, Cooper. Get this. There's another one. Kid's got brains. But he thinks he's going to be a tennis pro. The kid's a B player, but in his mind, he's John McEnroe. What does that say for his judgment? I'll tell you what he's good for. He can get little girls pregnant. That's what he's good for. Lieutenant, we at the university would appreciate it if you could wrap this up as quickly as possible. Oh, I understand, sir, and I do my best. Oh, uh, one more thing, sir. Did you happen to have dinner Thursday night at the Cafe Barato? In fact, I had dinner at a restaurant called Fredo, Lieutenant, in San Francisco, with the district attorney and the lieutenant governor. Thank you very much. Good night. Your car, sir. How'd you know it was mine? Oh, just a lucky guess.
Just one more thing. 